All right, so let's talk real quickly about tactics on how to correct the belts mistracking. So you understand these root cause um, issues on tracking a belt. Let's talk about how do we fix it, right? Who cares about why it's doing it, Jared? We don't give a crap about that. Tell us how to fix it. Here you go, all right? First thing you're gonna do is you wanna try to eliminate the root cause as much as possible. All right, if you can overcome some of the things that we just talked about, that's going to make the number two and the number three a whole lot easier. Listen, guys, there's no good reason to have carry back. There's no good reason to have a cupped belt. That's all preventable. There's no good reason to have camber. There's no good reason to have a crooked splice. The only reason those things happen is because people don't know that they're happening. If you suspect some of those things, let us know. We got guys all over the place. We'll come in and tell you what's going on and help you remedy it. It's not expensive. It's a hell of a lot less expensive than to send people out to constantly try to track a belt. So the first tactic in reducing a belt's likelihood to wander is to make sure that we reduce or eliminate those root causes as much as, it's, as, as is feasible. The next step is we want to identify our low tension rollers. There's reason for that. And then finally, and only until we've done this, and until we've done this, do we then make a physical adjustment to the rolling components. Okay, let's talk more about number two and number three here. So we want to make sure that we identify the low tension rollers. So I've got two examples for you here. I've got a belt under low tension and I've got a belt under high tension. When we're dealing in the low tension part of the belt, there's more contact between the rolling component and the belt. Therefore, there's more steerability with low tension rollers. Because there's more contact, those low tension rollers have more influence. So the first thing we gotta do is teach our guys which rollers are under which rollers shows where the belt is under low tension. So here's how we do that. Tension is always highest as the belt enters the drive pulley. Okay, so here's my conveyor. We won't put a take up on this one just to make it a little bit easier. And here's my head pulley. And in this instance, my drive is at my head pulley. So the drive pulley with its lagging grips and pulls the belt. So the belt's under really high tension right here because that, that drive pulley with its lagging is gripping and pulling the belt. Now, that same instance is reversed as the belt leaves the drive pulley. So right here, the belt is under very low tension because the lagging is pushing the belt away. So on a head-driven conveyor, your low tension rollers are gonna be on the return side. That's where we wanna send our guys to start making those physical adjustments. So let's take a little bit of a, a, a deeper dive into this. So we're always gonna begin after the drive pulley, right? All right, now notice I didn't put head pulley here. Is the drive always at the head pulley? No. So we always wanna begin after the drive pulley. Let's say the drive pulley's at the head. We're gonna start and we're gonna watch this roller if the belt's tracking fine at this roller, we're gonna move on to the second roller. If the belt's tracking fine at the second roller, we're gonna to move to the third roller. And if the belt's tracking fine at the third roller, we're gonna to move to the fourth. And if the belt's tracking fine at the fourth, we're gonna to move to the fifth. And let's say at roller five, we start to see that belt wander to one side or to the other side. Now we've identified 
where our belt tracking problem is coming from, now we can make a physical adjustment. Okay, keep in mind, high and low tension moves with the drive pulley. So you probably have conveyors that are driven from the tail. You might have some conveyors that are driven from the center pulley. In a tail driven conveyor, we would start on the carrying side. On a center driven conveyor, we would start right after the drive pulley. Keep in mind the drive pulley grips and pulls the belt into it and the drive pulley pushes the belt away for it. That's what creates that low tension scenario that if you take advantage of, you'll be really effective with belt tracking. Okay, wildly important, wildly important statement number two, write this down. Everybody in your group, if you've got groups of people in your room, everybody write this down, wildly important. The belt runs to the side of the roller that it comes into contact with first. Here's what that means. If I'm watching this belt and in this example, this diagram, that belt's running from your left to your right. And I see that belt run off to this side of the roller. Well, the belt runs to the side of the roller that it comes into contact with first. So if I see it hitting here, that means that either this roller or this roller pushed it here. What I see here actually happened back here or back here. So when you see that roller five start to see that belt start to move to one side on roller five, you want to move back one roll and make your physical adjustment to that roll. And you want to make sure that you understand you're knocking the idler, idler the correct way. That's why this phrase is so, so important. We want to use that phrase to correct the travel. So if we know the belt's traveling to the left, then we know it hit the left side of the previous roller first. We want to make that adjustment to that roller and make it hit both sides evenly to correct that tracking problem. 